Hello everyone, um, I've got a bit of a fairly straightforward um, video today. Something that's come up quite a lot on the um, various forums recently is um, how to make your own mix. Um, there's a lot of kind of good diets for rats and at some point I will do a kind of proper talk about why I would generally recommend either making your own mix or buying a really decent one and I will say most of the shop bought ones are not really decent ones unless you're talking about a specialist store like Rat Rations for instance. So what we're going to go through today is how to make probably one of the simplest but balanced and I think that's a key thing to say. Anybody can stick ingredients in a bowl but if you don't get it balanced for rats then it's going to have long-term implications um, to their health and they don't live long enough anyway so let's give them every chance they can by giving them a decent balanced one. So first major things, what do rats need from a diet? So if when we look at a wild rat or rats that forage kind of naturally, the kind of foods they eat is really quite broad ranging, they're scavengers. Um, but one thing that is constant, if they're gonna live a kind of decent length of life, they need high, high kind of concentration of a grain based diet um, with some kind of seeds for fat and some protein elements. Um, in the wild, they might kind of scavenge for bits of um, carrion, that kind of thing. Um, or even catch anything that's kind of a bit slower than them. <laughs> so this is kind of what we want to model when we're building our own diet. Um, one of the kind of best recipes out there that I've seen for a diet is the Shunamarite diet and some of you may be familiar with it. It, um, it was formulated by a, lo a lovely lady called Alison Campbell who's actually written through um, well, one book but there's like four issues of it now um, called The Scuttling Gourmet that if you have a real interest in diet I'd recommend anybody to read and actually she has a kind of subscription service that's very interested for that kind of purpose as well as well as for behaviour but the Shunamite diet itself is a very simple thing and it's named after her former rattery um, she doesn't breed now but back then she did and actually interestingly enough my foundation rats came from um, Shunamite amongst um, another breeder as well um, so it's something that's quite close to my heart but the diet itself works really well because it can be so simple but you can make it as complicated as you want um, what I'm going to go through today is a five ingredient <laughs> mix which is perfectly possible to get nice and balanced um, what I actually do for a normal mix for my rats is many 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 more ingredients in fact I've currently you can't see behind the camera now but I've got boxes and boxes out while I've gone and fished through and find found what the kind of simple ingredients are that work really well um, I might take um, do another video of that and take you through the kind of things that I actually do add to kind of add variety for mine but it doesn't matter you can make a perfectly good very nice and um, balanced diet for your rats using only five ingredients um, so that's what we're going to go through today and when I say five ingredients it's five in, in many cases ready-made mixes that you can just buy at kind of shops and I'm going to try and keep this to something that you can get um, on the high street so you don't necessarily have to spend ages shopping online or sp spend a lot on delivering specific ingredients but you can still do that you can buy everything online as well fairly straightforward so first part now the overall balance of the um, diet and if you need a reminder of this the it's on my website, which is salmonrats.co.uk, and in the diet and feeding, um, kind of on, on the dry in the dry mix section, there's a make your own mix. So that will help remind you if you don't want to have to keep scrolling back to this video. So first part of it is the base mix. So what we use for the base mix is some sort of ready formulated mix that's close to what rats need. Um, what I'm using today, which I will get a scoop of and show you is a kind of rabbit food so this is Harrison's banana brunch which is a rabbit food that is highly inappropriate for rabbits because rabbits actually shouldn't have mixes and mueslis um, but it's really good for rats because it's about 14% protein rats between need, need around 14% actually but um, as adults once they're, once they're fully grown um, it's nice um, barley based so barley is one of those grains that's um, very kidney kind tiny little barley green for you um, and when you're talking about like long life discussion that is great um, I will say with Harrison's banana brunch it is brilliant it is what I use personally as the bulk of my mix I do use other rabbit foods as well it's sometimes hard to get locally what you tend to have to do is go in and ask places whether they can order it in for you um, if if you can do that you can generally get it quite cheap I get a, a sack 15 kilogram sack for 
about 10, 11 quid, which is a bargain, but you can buy it online as well. Um, but there are other rabbit mixes and actually there are other mixes generally. So when you're trying to pick something, what you want to pick is something that is um, not pelleted. So this has got, and I'm not meaning by the use of pellets, but I mean, um, you can get little alfalfa pellets, which make up the bulk of a lot of decent rabbit diets. In fact, some of the rabbit diets are just entirely the same identical pellets. That is not what you want for rats. What you want instead is a decent muesli, and then you want to have it um, on the list of ingredients. You want to find something that has got either alfalfa not on there. Um, uh, when I say alfalfa, I also mean wheat feed, straw feed, grass. Um, they either need to be not on there at all or quite low down in the ingredients. Um, in UK kind of well, animal feeds, they have to list the ingredients in order of kind of amount in it. It's not the same in every country, but it does work and stay true for the UK. Um, if you're not sure and you're not from the UK, have a bit of a look. You don't want to see many. You can see a few um, and there's there's various that are available in the UK that are OK, like um, uh, Mr Johnson's um, Supreme, I think's OK. It's a bit high in wheat and, and I can explain why I prefer not to have high wheat later on. Um, but it, it's fine, you know, it's a good, good starting point. Um, you can also get ones that are, kind of have peas as the kind of base. They're not bad either. Again, they tend to have a like, slightly higher um, kind of grass content and such. Um, Harrison's Banana Brunch is good, though it is a little bit too high in bananas and a lot of people actually pick them out, which you're welcome to do, but you don't actually have to. Um, they're a bit high in sugar and phosphorus and such, which you want to watch in older rats. Um, as for the choice for wheat, not wheat, wheat is quite high, high in phosphorus, which is something that comes into play when you have older rats. So if you've got young rats, you don't really need to think about it very much. If you've got rats that are getting on a bit, say over 18 months, um, their kidneys are already not doing too well. They're a bit of a weak link in rats, so you want to watch that. Um, what you can do as well is you can even mix um, a couple of different, they have different weaknesses. So like banana, Harris Banana Brunch does have its weaknesses. It's low in copper, which is a pain in the backside at times, especially when you've got black or gray rats. Um, and it's a bit low in fat as well, which you sometimes make up by adding a little bit more. But it's a perfectly good base. So rabbit mueslis that are kind of similar in principle, around 14% protein, ideally 10 milligrams per kilogram of copper or higher, and around about four to 5% fat there you're your optimum, low alfalfa. Um, have a bit of a look around, look on the ba backs of bags. If in doubt, you can always post what ingredients you've got and I don't mind commenting on it. I'm sure other people will have opinions as well. Um, that is a, one of the most important things you can get. Um, you can, and when I talk about a more advanced mix, make your own from kind of mixtures of grains, but that is harder and does involve more work later on like supplements and such. So this is the really simple way of doing it. So I'm going to add, my five scoops. Oh, actually, I should explain this. Um, one of the key things with the Shunamite diet is that it's volume based. So that means when it was formulated, in order to get it balanced, Alison took into account the relative density. So that means how heavy a, a single pot is of something. So in order to mix it properly, you need to mix it by volume, not by weight. So you can't just say, oh, I'm going to put in 500 grams of this and 20 grams of that. Unless you've really worked it out in terms of the density, it's going to screw with the percentages. So whatever I explain is going to be explained in percent by volume. That means that when I start thinking about the mix, I think, right, I'm going to assign a set percentage to a certain to, to a pot. And in this case, I'm using this tub because it's not a bad size. I'm not exactly sure I'm mixing far bigger quantities than this. Not exactly sure how many will fill my tub, but I think this will be plenty. So what I'm going to notionally say is this, this tub is 5% by volume. And therefore, when I'm working out how much I'm going to put in, I'm going to put a number of these that add up to the right thing. So the base mix, so your kind of rabbit food or similar, doesn't have to be rabbit food, there's some fairly good pygmy goat mixes that meet similar criteria to the rat food and some horse mixes that I know some people use, again, sim meet the similar criteria um, that around 12 to 14% protein, 4 to 5% fat and decent copper, 10 milligrams a kilogram and above, low alfalfa. Try and avoid too much molasses, which is kind of sugar. Um, and sugar beet, similar principle. Tastes nice, not so good for the teeth. Um, but yes, when you're going for that, so 50% for this base mix, which means because I've got, um, this is 5%, I'm gonna need to add 10 of those to make up my kind of 
50%. Um, what I will say as I'm doing this with um, base mix is that it's between, if you, if you read the actual kind of breakdown I've got on my site, it's between um, 50 and 60%. Um, you can kind of make the call um, yourself depending on what your rats need. I'm choosing 50% for this because um, I'm going to add a little bit more in the way of cereals. I'm actually going to add a little bit of something that's a bit higher in copper because um, the Harrison's Banana Brunch is a little low, but I'll explain why when I get to the kind of next section. So we've got four, I think. Five. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. So simple as that, we've now got um, what is equivalent to 50% of my full mix, which is not loads in my box. I've probably gone for, could have gone for a bigger scoop than this. Um, you'll find after you do it a few times, you find a scoop size that just suits your container. So next step in this food, shift this out of the way for now, is um, the protein element. So rats don't want particularly high protein overall in a mix, but they do want a decent amount. Um, they need it for all sorts of things. They're growing particularly, um, but it's quite an important thing. However, the type of protein matters. Um, one thing that you see a lot is really poor quality proteins and it's something I've experienced and a lot of other breeders and like long-term owners have experienced but there isn't any studies to back this up but low quality proteins do seem to see a, a significant increase in mammary tumours popping up so you have to be very conscious of that. Um, so what you want and what I'd recommend is go for, for a simple mix, a kibble is great, go for something that's decent quality, you don't need much, you're not going to get through a lot of it with the rats so you might as well spend a little bit more on it. Um, this is uh, natural kibble and actually they tend to be better quality than a lot of the stuff like you see in the supermarkets like pedigree chum, fr frolic, that kind of stuff that I wouldn't touch with a barge pole. Um, they do tend to be better quality, a bit more expensive, but it's worth it because they don't have long lives. You want to kind of maximise and they're already prone to mammary tumours, so give them the best you can. Um, I like fish for dogs, but there's also ranges like Burns, um, Fishmonger's Friend, um, James Well Beloved, they all are pretty good. Um, I like fish based. Um, this is because it's kind of, it's less pro, like farmed and such, so it tends to be slightly better. And I think the oils are quite good. It's high in omega-3 oils, which is always good for rats and their skin. Um, I like this as well because it's small kibble, which is kind of perfectly rat sized. So I'll try and fish a few bits out. So as you can see, much smaller than like your normal dog kibble, which is probably two or three times that size. I find it perfect size for them. So, um, protein amount. You want to be adding between five and 10%. And this is why all of the sections will vary a little bit because your rat's needs might vary and that's the real power in the mix. So I'm gonna go for 10% at the moment because I would go for lower if I had some really old rats in the cage. And I do actually have some old rats in this little cage down here. Um, but they are on slightly different diets. So I don't actually have to worry about putting a little bit more protein and I have several ba babies they're about five months old but um, I have several young rats in my main group so I want to make sure it's suitable for them and I can always water it down and it's what I should do with the oldies but I'll do that in a different video I could talk a lot right so same principle again we've got our scoop that's equal to five percent so I'm going to put in two scoops and that will give us a ten percent of protein So the mix is coming together, we now have um, base mix, we have our protein element. The next thing we're going to do is what I would call processed grains, or you might call um, human kind of grains. So what we use for this is typically breakfast cereals. Now breakfast cereals are handy because they're enriched, which means they've already got some vitamins added, which helps kind of top up the rats, you might say. One thing you have to be very careful with is a lot of human breakfast cereals are uh, very high in sugar, which is just not good for the rats, um, they get prone to dental abscesses and all sorts, so you really don't want to do anything with, um, with that. So what you want to look for is cereals that are ideally 5 grams per 100 gram, which is effectively 5% sugar or less. Um, what you tend to find is you're gonna, sometimes you have to go a little bit higher than that, but really try and keep it as low as you can, 6, 
7 grams is okay when you're talking 10, 12, 15, 20. Some are even like a quarter sugar, which is ridiculous. Um, so avoid them. And what you want to do is get three different um, grains, ideally. Um, you can get some that are already mixed. I just buy um, three different types. So I buy kind of Rice Krispies value, because value is cheap and the rats really don't care. Um, value cornflakes and own brand shredded wheat pillows and that's kind of plenty you can add other things as well you can add a little bit of pasta don't add too much generally speaking you can add a bit of egg noodles rye vita rice crispy cakes but these i just buy in bulk stick them all in a plastic bag which is the plastic bag behind me mix it up and then stick a few scoops into my mix um, so i suppose this is technically more than five ingredients but um, it's very simple to do this um, so I'm going to put in, so the processed grains, it depends how much you, base mix you put in. So I've put in 50% base mix, so I'm going to put in 25% of these processed grains. Um, it varies a little bit depending on where your group is at. Um, I do have a few oldies in my group. Processed grains are easier for oldies to eat. Um, but what I'm actually probably going to stick in um, as a kind of top up, which you don't have to do, but I will do anyway, is something that's quite high in, pro in in copper just to make up and I have some black rat as well, a black rat in my cage and she's already got a bit of a rusty butt so that will help. So for 25% I will be looking to add in total five of these. I should also note I'm dyslexic so I forget any of these maths wrong, bear with me. So that's four of those and I'm just going to nip um, these are conditioning cubes and um, I buy them from um, local stores and they're actually quite high in copper which is great um, so I'm just going to add a few of these in and they will help top it up you don't need to do this necessarily but I'm interested in showing and um, it just helps keep the rats less rusty. So that's in. That's my processed grains um, all done. So the next bit is to look at um, fruit and veg. So when I say fruit and veg, it's mainly going to be veg and herbs and that kind of thing. Um, this adds kind of more of a range of flavours, textures, and some actually added kind of vitamins and minerals that you would not include properly. Um, the most simple way of doing this is to get something like this. So this is sold for rabbits in most supermarkets. Um, I particularly like this one because it's got a nice range of stuff in. What you're looking for something is got bits of dried vegetables, dried herbs in, um, not too much by grass again. Rats can't really digest grass very well, so you tend to avoid it. Um, you want to add 10% of the mixture of vegetable herbs or you could say 5% vegetables 5% herbs if you want to get two different things or dry your own which incidentally I do do <laughs> I have um, various bags of home drive stuff here that I use in my own mix but I do still get bags of this because I like it it smells nice it smells of mint um, and rat smelling of mint is significantly better than rat smelling of rat poo or similar. Um, so I'm going to add two scoops full of this and that will make up that 10% of vegetables and herbs. One. Really does smell nice. And two. So we're nearly there now. We've, we've added our fourth kind of proper ingredient, our proper section. And now we're on to the final bit, which is quite important. And some people think, oh, my rat's fat. I can't add this section. But actually, it's far more important than just to do with weight. So this is the seed section. The seed is responsible for um, omega oils, which help them process all sorts of things. It helps keep the coat in good condition. Um, it is not something that you want to sacrifice because your rat is overweight. Your rat is overweight from eating too much, not for eating fat. Um, and I think that's really important. And actually the right kind of fat is important too. So seeds, you want to be kind of careful with what seeds you use. So um, what I've got here, which is, give you a bit of an idea, is a seed mix. Um, now, you, 
you need to think about which seed mix you're getting and look around a little bit. Um, it can be very easy to just go and get a bag of wild bird food that's got peanuts, sunflower seeds, niger seeds in, and a small amount of those isn't a problem in an otherwise great mix, but a large amount, um, you can get rats that um, have an allergy to sunflower protein. It's not uncommon and kind of get itchy skin and all sorts. Um, sometimes they call it protein itch, but it's not the protein, it's the specific seed that's causing the kind of allergic reaction. Peanuts again, um, and niger seeds, they're very high oil, but they're not the right kind of oil. They tend to be a lot higher in the omega-6 and such, um, and it's not necessarily what they want. Brilliant seeds are things like linseed, hemp seed, pumpkin seeds. Those are my kind of three. I really love these. I like fennel seed because that gives it a lovely smell as well. Um, coconut is also useful, um, though you don't want to do loads of it. So what I would say is either um, oh, bud budgie seed is fine. Um, you don't want masses and masses of it, but that mixed with some linseed and hemp seed and such is, is fine. Um, this was a particular, I think, parakeet mix or something that one of my friends made, um, found, sorry. In one of the shops and, and it works really well but if you're struggling just go down to your local health food shop buy a bag of linseed buy a bag of hemp seed from a fishing tackle shop mix them together and if you find some stick in some pumpkin seeds and it's very simple do a ready-made mix um, and then just chuck some in maybe chuck a small bag of kind of wild bird food in because i mean if you have a look in my mix there is some <laughs> some flower seeds but there's like three that i can see in there um, there'll be more further down but that gives you a bit of a feel so you can actually make your own seed mix if you're struggling to find one that's really good. Um, and I would say linseed's particularly good. Don't be sold by the flax seed um, bandwagon because that is basically just linseed is common flax. Um, so people say flax is a superfood, linseed's a superfood. It's one of my um, favourite seeds, if I'm honest, and it's a very good source of protein and oils for rats. So for seeds, we want to add um, 5% effectively, so one scoop. So I just need to fill this up a little bit more. Um, however, this is one where if your rat's coats seem a bit dry, they get a bit dandruffy, um, or mine, my rat room um, gets a bit cold over winter um, because it's whilst I've got a heater in here, it is ultimately separate from the house. It's a kind of converted garage. Um, so it gets down at the moment, it's about 15 degrees. I need my jumper. <laughs> um, they're fine, they're climbing all over the place, quite warm. Um, but I do quite often up the seeds in winter, so I might stick an extra half a tub in, that kind of thing, when I'm making my full mix. Um, but it's one that you've got a little bit of control. You can vary some of these amounts by the rats. If you're not sure how... Um, I have written a big blob on condition on my website that you can have a read of. Um, and I will at some point do a video on condition, but it's lower in my priority list than a lot because a lot of people don't get to that stage where it really matters to them in the same way. Though I will say condition is really important. Um, it's kind of the, how do you put it, the inward, so the outward sign of the inner health. So if the rat is healthy, it will shine and literally in a lot of ways shine too. Um, it will be nice weight, nice muscle tone, that kind of thing. And that's a sign that you're getting your diet right. But I could talk on that for hours, so I'm not going to tonight. I'm just going to get this sorted. Add my final scoop. And then what we've got is a large lot of stuff. So I'm going to give it a quick mix and then I'll show you the finished mix. So we have a finished mix. Now if you look at that, that is significantly more interesting and appetising than what you can buy at a local shop. And it's definitely a lot more appetising than um, you will get in a nugget form. Um, one thing I will say when feeding a mix, you need to make sure you don't keep topping up the bowls. If they leave bits, that's because you're feeding them too much. So you want to make sure that you feed them a set amount per day. And a good starting point for that is about 15 grams per rat per day. Um, it can be useful to split that into two daily feeds, depending on the rats and your group and that kind of thing. Um, you may need to feed a bit more than that, a bit less than that. It all depends on how they hold their weights and how healthy they seem and feel. Um, but one thing is they will leave. So you can see there are little kind of grains and such in this. So this is fairly normal. Um, 
when they eat those they'll eat the inside and leave the husk on the outside so some people think oh no there's a load of waste going on in my mix when actually the rats have just done what they should taken out the inside that's part of the enrichment um, and, and kind of thrown away the, the rubbish the wrapper as such um, but yes yeah, so that is a complete mix you can see with all my waffling it's taken me like 24 minutes to mix um, it will take significantly less if you weren't talking like nuts um, and trying to explain the different options and it's there it's done I don't need to supplement that because I've used an enriched base which means a, a kind of rabbit food or a, another food that has vitamins added um, I don't need to kind of soup it up with more things and I've used the the kibble also brings really valuable copper content the breakfast cereals more vitamins in there so I don't need to supplement it which means it's easy I can be lazy and that's it and that is plenty varied enough for the people that go a little bit nuts like me and have a thousand and one ingredients um, we do it because we love it and not because it necessarily offers that much more to the rats um, so I would really encourage people to try it's very achievable it's it's worthwhile and the rats will generally look better on it because you can tweak it you can make it suit them and really that's at the heart of any kind of good feeding of rats like knowing knowing when they need a little bit different and trying things and you can everything's like one of my, my kind of pet subjects feeding rats is a science but on top of that's the art so you can get a rat to a decent condition just by following the science you know what percentage of protein and everything they want you follow the guidelines very strictly the art is the bit where you take it to the next step and that's where condition comes in and where um, I will talk on at some point for those interested and I'll talk on how you kind of get a more exciting varied mix and some of the options as well in another video as well so hopefully that's useful any questions feel free to ask and feel free to share this to anybody you think might be useful as well. Um, good luck in making your first mix.